There we go. I got it. Good morning, St. John. Good morning. Giving all honor to God and to our pastor, our people, McCruel. We're about to give devotion. Scripture will be coming from Psalm number one. When you find it, say amen. Amen. I'll be reading from the King James translation. My Bible reads as thus. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, Amen. nor standeth in the way of sinners, Amen. nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Amen. But he delight, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, Amen. and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. Amen. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, Amen. that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. 
the ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. That was Psalms 1 in its entirety, God's word for all people. Amen. Would everyone please bow your heads and join me in prayer? Let us pray. Our Father, our God, we come before you this morning asking for your blessings. But first, Father, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for being the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Thank you for being the God who stepped out of nothing and said, let there be. Thank you for being the Alpha and the Omega. Just thank you for being God Almighty. Thank you, God. Father, for witness this morning, allowing us to see another day, a day, a day we've never seen before. Thank you for watching over us throughout this past week. Protect us from dangers seen and unseen, and give us safe passage to your house this morning. I ask, Father, that uh, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that you forgive us of our sins, yes. our trespasses, our misdeeds, and our shortcomings. I ask you bless and keep our pastor and his family with good health and safety. Yes. Let him continue to follow you as he leads us. Bless and keep the mothers and congregation of this church. Thank you for allowing us once again to come together this morning to give you praise and worship. Bless all who are on our prayer list. You know what each of them needs, Father, please provide it for them. Bless and keep our friends and neighbors and their families. Thank you for everything you do for them, and please continue to bless them. Father, look in behind those locked up behind prison walls, prison walls and jail doors. Test them, Father, and let, they, let them know that they too can be saved by turning to your son, Jesus. I ask now, Father, that your Holy Spirit come into this house. Let us feel it moving and working inside of us, making us be what you'd like us to be. Father, let us continue to grow in your word and become better disciples and Christians. All these things we ask your darling son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And Father, thank you for everything you do for us. Please continue to bless us. We'll love, praise, and worship you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Good morning, St. John. Good morning. How many of y'all know that there's nobody greater than our God? Amen. 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 Search all over to find nobody. I look high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great. Nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Let's sing that one more time. Nobody greater. No.
chapter verses 1 through 9 and this is the King James Version let us read responsibly please and you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins Among whom also we all had our conversations in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, in his rich and mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. All together, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. A congregation of him for the morning, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see.
amazing and great. Amen. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I don't know about you, but I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Amen. Amen. Hey, now that's some amazing grace. Amen. Amen. That, that will find the lost and give sight to the blind. Amen. Amen. We thank God for his amazing grace. Amen. Amen. Good morning, St. John. Amen. 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 All right. What a blessing it is to see your beautiful smiling faces behind the mask this morning. Amen. We're indeed grateful to God that he's blessed us and brought us through another week's journey. Amen. Amen. Certainly, uh, we want to thank Sister Helen Young and Sister uh, Tasha Young for cleaning and disinfecting the church on yesterday. Amen. 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 Head start on COVID-19. Amen. Keeping that rascal out of here. Amen. Amen. Uh, we spoke with uh, Brother Long, and Brother Long asked me to share with St. John that he says, tell everybody I said hello and I love them. Amen. 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 It's good to certainly talk with Brother Long. Amen. Amen. Certainly we're happy to report that uh, the Thomases, Dr. Clark, Sister Smith, all safely arrived in Boston on yesterday. And uh, all went well with their travel, and we certainly praise God for their safe arrival. Amen. Amen. And anytime you uh, put your life in the hands of somebody you don't know on an airplane, amen, amen, because you don't know the pilot, and, 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 and you don't know how you're going to take off, and you don't know how you're going to land. Amen. And anytime God will uh, allow you to take off and land, and, and, and the way you land is the way you took off in good condition and health and safety, that's certainly something to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. And we certainly praise God for taking care of them for us as only he can do. Amen. Amen. Certainly we were blessed on yesterday uh, by Sister Shanita Ali as she presented the lesson for the women's ministry on yesterday. Amen. 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 We certainly want to thank all of those who came out and took part in the, uh, meet, the ministry uh, meeting on yesterday. Amen. Amen. I'd like to share with St. John that the pews have been respaced. Amen. Amen. They, they were previously spaced, and I noticed that there, uh, for some reason, uh, there are those who can't go between the pews without moving the pews since they aren't stationary. Uh, you know, uh, somebody feels like they just, it's just something about where the pew is sitting, they just have to move it. <laughs> but the pews are spaced so that we can have our proper distancing uh, this, uh, we have uh, the six feet that we're uh, required to have. Well, the pews are spaced so that we have six feet and three inches between where you're sitting. So uh, whether you're standing or whether you're sitting, we still have the proper six feet distancing. So it would be most helpful uh, if we could get everybody to leave the pews where they are. Yes, sir. You know, if, if, if you just can't walk between the pews, uh, there, there are some seats downstairs uh, where you don't have to be bothered with trying to walk between pews to get to them. Amen. Amen. Uh, because uh, we need to keep our personal space distancing. And we need your... It would be most helpful because... Uh, 
I'm going to share with you uh, that the pastor of St. John don't like getting the tank measure out and measuring and moving pews like he did on yesterday. All right, all right. And, and he would certainly appreciate it if you would help him out by leaving the pews where they are. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I, I know you can, and I'm prayerful that you will. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the back is not what it used to be, uh, so I, I don't need to be expending the energy of, of moving pews. Amen. Certainly, uh, as we said on last Sunday, water is available uh, downstairs, bottle of water for those who uh, need water, who get thirsty. And there are eight ounce, there are the eight ounce bottles down there for those who can only drink eight ounces of water. And there's the 16.9 ounce bottles downstairs for those who can drink and who will drink uh, 16.9 ounces. And if you if you can't handle that much, go go with the eight ounces. Amen. 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 And if you haven't uh, gotten your COVID test yet. Please, ma'am, please, sir, please get tested for COVID-19. Testing is still yet available through Test Nebraska, through Charles Drew Health uh, Center, and the Red Cross. Amen. And certainly like to remind everybody when you go out, please wear your mask, maintain social distancing, and personal space distancing so that you can avoid uh, coming in contact with COVID-19. Again, this Friday, uh, fruits and vegetables will be available at uh, the Clare United Methodist Church at 8 a.m. Uh, uh, until they run out. So we do advise you to go early uh, in order that you might receive uh, some fruits and vegetables. Also, they will be available at Antioch Baptist Church over on 42nd Street at 9.30. Amen. Amen. Again want to remind us that we are back on our regular schedule so please ma'am please sir please uh be present when you should be present for the ministry activity that you are scheduled for amen also I'd like to remind us that the uh, restroom upstairs is for our seniors and those with physical uh disabilities please ma'am please sir if you do not fall into that category, please use the restrooms available downstairs. Amen. If you haven't done so already, please fill out the 2020 census. Uh, we need you to do so in order that we might receive our just funding back from the federal government. If you have not already done so, please register to vote. This election coming up is most important. Uh, each election is important, uh, but certainly this national election is of great and of grave importance. Amen. Because it will determine uh, the way the nation will be going. So if you don't vote, uh, then you don't have anything to complain about when the voting is over and how things turn out. But we want you to take your uh, rightful part in the election process. Amen. And we do encourage you to uh, send in your request for a, a mail-in uh, ballot. Once you get it, fill it out and then take it to the election commission office and put it in their drop box rather than mailing it in uh, because we know there's a lot of shenanigans uh, going on with the postal service. Yes. Amen. So we want to make sure that our vote gets counted. Yes. Amen. Yes. How many unsaved, unchurched believers did you invite to Christ this week? Uh, again, as we know, it is our responsibility to share the word of God with those who don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. Uh, Christ gave us that responsibility. He told us to go into all the world and make disciples. First step in disciple making is evangelizing. And he's given us that task. So we should be busy about our Lord's work. 
Lastly, but not leastly, how many unsaved, unchurched believers did you invite to St. John this week? Amen. As we can see, uh, we are uh, few in numbers this morning, and that may be because you didn't invite anybody to come. Amen. That just might be the reason why. Amen. So let us be about, again, our Father's business and inviting others to the household of faith. Amen. 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 Certainly at this time now, we will be prepared to be blessed by a musical selection coming from our music ministry. Amen.
I plead the blood. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The writer makes it very clear that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And as long as I have the blood of Jesus Christ covering me, I can deal with Satan because I know he has to go through Jesus Christ before he can get to me. Amen. As we approach now the altar call, time we can come to God as the children of God, as the family of God to approach our Heavenly Father. And as we go to God in prayer on this morning, we are certainly mindful of those who are listed on the prayer list. Also, we'd like to add to the prayer list uh, Sister Tasha Young um, shared with me that she lost a receiving news of the home going of one of her family members on this morning. And when those whom we love dearly are taken from among us, it leaves a hole and an aching in our heart and in our spirits. So we certainly want to be in prayer for her and her family on this morning. We know there's much that we need to pray for. And as we prepare to go to God in prayer, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. That calls me from. A world of care. And bids me at my father's throne. Make all my wants and wishes known. Seasons of distress and grief. My soul has often found relief. Escape the tempest now. My thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Let us pray. Loving Father and gracious God, we humbly bow before your presence with thanksgiving. We come thanking you, dear Father, for another opportunity to call on your holy and righteous name. We're grateful that you look beyond our faults and our failures and you blessed us to see another day, a day that we don't deserve to see. But because of your loving kindness and tender mercy, we've been blessed to see this day. And we are indeed truly grateful. We come thanking you for Jesus the Christ, your only begotten Son, through whom we have everlasting life and have the privilege of being adopted into your family. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit who leads us, guides us, directs us in the way that you would have us to go. Now, Father, as we come today, we come thanking you for all of the many blessings that you've given to us. Thank you how you continually shower your loving kindness, your tender mercy upon us in spite of our unworthiness. We thank you, O oh God, that you are God all by yourself and that no man and no one has influence over your being God. 
As we come today, we come thanking you that you've been mighty good to us. You've been far better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. As we come, we come confessing our many sins, faults, and failures. We pray and ask that you would search our hearts. Give us a clean heart so that we might serve you. Then, Father, after you clean our hearts, we ask that you would fill us with your love, fill us with your joy, fill us with your peace, fill us with your patience, fill us with your long-suffering, fill us with your faith, Fill us, O oh God, that we might be the brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus that you called out of a world of darkness into your marvelous light to be. Now, Father, we, as we come today, we thank you, O oh God, for your taking the Thomases safely to Boston. For we know, O oh God, that uh, you had to hold them in the hall of your hands in order for them to travel from Omaha and to arrive safely in Boston. And we thank you, O oh God, because we know that nobody could do that but you. Then, Father, as we come today, we come asking a special blessing upon Sister Tasha Young and her family as they are bereaved on today. And we know that you know all about bereavement. So we pray and ask that you would touch, comfort, and console them. Lift them up, O oh God, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Help them to always be mindful of the fact that they who die in the Lord shall live again. Not only them, but the Dixon family and, and all families who are bereaved on today. Because we know, O oh God, that it is difficult for us to see a loved one leave us. But we know, O oh God, that you never take anything away from us that you do not replace. So help us, O oh God, to seek that uh, which you give us as a replacement, uh, that which you give us to hold on to. Help us always to remember those precious, joyous memories uh, that you have given us that we have from being blessed by the presence of those who you allowed to be in our lives for a period of time. Now, Father, we ask your blessing upon uh, sir, my mother, Ada Young, uh, Brother Long, and, and all those who are absent from among us, Sister Charlotte Blue Ken, and those who are absent due to illness, oh God. We pray and ask that you would touch and heal according to your will and your purpose. And then, Father, when you have done so, uh, that they might uh, have a testimony about your healing in their bodies. Not only them, oh God, but we pray for those who find themselves locked behind jailhouse doors and prison walls. Some they're justly and some unjustly. But we pray and ask, oh God, that you would touch them and let them know that if they would just turn it over to you, that you are able to turn it around and cause all things to work together for good. For those who love you and who are the call according to your will and your purpose. Then, Father, they are those who are absent from among us who have been absent for a period of time and we don't know why they've been absent but you know so we pray and ask oh god that whatever their situation is whatever their circumstance might be we pray and ask dear god that you would touch them and that you would change their situation change their condition and put on their hearts and minds to return to the house of prayer where they might worship you and fellowship with like-minded believers. Then, Father, we ask your blessings upon, upon the President of these United States. We ask that you would touch his heart, touch his mind, and touch his spirit. We pray and ask, O oh God, that you would cause him to seek your guidance, seek your direction in his decision-making. Because the decisions that he makes affect your people. And that one day he too must give an account of his stewardship. The deeds that he does in his body. And not only him, but all those who are elected officials. Those who are in positions of leadership. Uh, touch each leader. Let each leader know that uh, your watchful eye is upon them. 
And that one day they too must stand before the righteous judge and give an account of the deeds that they do in their bodies. Now, Father, we ask you to continue blessings upon the worship experience this day. Bless the music ministry that as the songs of Zion go forth, that some heart, soul, and spirit might be touched through the music ministry and come closer to you. Then, Father, we ask you to bless us upon your preached word that your word will go forth, that hearts, lives, minds would be changed and transformed and would be according to the preaching of the word. For you said in your word that your word would not return unto you void, but that it will accomplish that which you sent it forth to do. Then, Father, we ask a special blessing upon the St. John Missionary Baptist Church family. You know our individual needs. You know our collective needs. Bless us, O oh God, that we might be a blessing to those that we come in contact with. We thank you, O oh God, for what you have done. We thank you, O oh God, for what you are doing. And then we thank you, Father, in advance for what you will do. Then, Father, when life as we know it down here has come to an end, and we won't have to study war no more, we pray and ask that you meet us in that day and in that hour. We'll be able to hear your welcoming voice say, Servant of God, well done. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on home now and make you ruler over many. These and all of our blessings we ask. In the name of our living, in the name of our loving, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, let the saints of God say together, Amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Let us prepare now for the ministry of giving. Amen. 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 The ministry of giving. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. cheerful giver because if you give cheerfully that demonstrates that you love the Lord. Amen. 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 Let us read that together in unison please. Even from the days of your fathers ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with the curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast their fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. Amen. If you did not have opportunity to place your tithes and offerings in the tithe and collection box, as you enter the sanctuary, we ask that you please take advantage of the opportunity to do so as you exit the sanctuary. Thank you. Certainly want to say thank you to all those who are physically unable to worship with us today, who are worshiping us through live streaming. And we thank you as you are, are worshiping with us through live streaming. And we thank those uh, who take advantage of the opportunity of supporting the ministry through your tithes and offerings, through Giveify, through mailing them in to the church, and through sending them in for the support of the ministry. Amen. 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 And certainly, uh, we want to especially thank those uh, who are 
giving over and above your tithes and offering, making sacrificial gifts to the building fund. We certainly do appreciate you very much for your sacrificial giving. Amen. 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 We will now be prepared to be blessed by another musical selection from the most magnificent music ministry this side of heaven. Amen. 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 Let all 
us vow in a word of prayer. Gracious God and loving Father, as we approach the hour of the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus the Christ, we acknowledge, O oh Lord, our unworthiness to handle your word. We pray and ask that you would please empty me of self and make me a fit vessel to be used by you. Please, Lord, think with my mind. Please love with my heart. And please speak with my tongue that your word will go forth and accomplish that which you sent it forth to do. Please hide me now behind the shadow of the cross of Calvary, that your people might see none of me, but all of thee. Let the name of Jesus Christ may be glorified, and that the body of Christ may be edified. We gladly give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Certainly we solicit your prayers this morning and ask that you would pray with us and pray for us. I'd like to prayerfully call your attention to the book of James, the third chapter, verses 1 through verse 12. Certainly for those who uh, miss Sunday school this morning, you will have your opportunity to get a portion of the lesson now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, all right. Amen. Nothing like some young amens. <laughs> That's the book of James, the third chapter, verses 1 through verse 12. And I will be reading from the New King James Version. That's the epistle according to James, the third chapter, verses 1 through verse 12. Amen. And it reads, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment for we are uh, stumbled in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, we turn their whole body. Look, al look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue a low member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a low fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defies the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast, for every kind of beast, um, a reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. 
It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Thus, no spring yields both salt water and fresh. When we look at uh, verses 7 through 10, it says to us, For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea, is tame and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our God and Father. And with it, we curse man, who has been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. We'd like to use for a thought for your prayer for consideration, wild thing. <laughs> wild thing. Back in 1966, there was a group by the name of the Trogs. <laughs> and they wrote a song entitled Wild Thing. And the song simply says, Wild Thing, you make my heart sing. You make everything groovy. Wild Thing. Wild Thing, I love you. But I want to know for sure. Come on and hold me tight. I love you. Wild thing. You make my heart sing. You make everything groovy. Wild thing. Wild thing. I think you move me. But I want to know for sure. Come on and hold me tight. You move me. Wild thing. You make my heart sing. You make everything groovy. Wild thing. Wild thing. You make my heart sing. When I recall the words of this song, and I look at what James tells us about the tongue, uh, it suggests to me that our tongue is a wild thing. Because James says to us, says that uh, of every beast, man can tame. He says, but the tongue, no man can tame. He wants us to know that the tongue is a wild thing. And I've discovered that what James tells us is true. Have you ever noticed how sometimes uh, you say things before you know you have said them? And then after you have said them, you wish that you could just reach out and catch those words and pull them back. Well, the reason why that happens is because your tongue is a wild thing. All right. See, your tongue is out of control. See, our tongues will speak 
before our minds engage. You, you, you see, the, the, the tongue is a, 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 a reactionary thing. You see, uh, I, I, I've discovered that whenever something occurs, uh, the tongue has already prepared what it is going to say. Uh, the, the tongue does not have to know what the situation is and what it's all about, but just rest assured the tongue will say what the tongue wants to say. Amen. You know, because the tongue is just that wild. Yeah. And, and I've discovered that uh, there is two things that we know about the tongue. One thing James tells us is that the tongue is untamable and then the tongue is always changeable. Yeah, yeah, see? And, and, and that's because it's a wild thing, and anything you can't control will do what it wants to do. And because it is untamable, uh, you can't always get your tongue to say the same thing the second time that it said the first time. It's always changeable. And, and, and you see, that, that, that's one thing about the tongue. If we're not careful, because the tongue is a wild thing, the tongue will tell a lie before you know it. Why? Because it's a wild thing. Yeah, yeah, and, and wild things just act like that. And, and see, because... We can't control it. Oftentimes, it will control us. You know your tongue can get you into things that the rest of you can't get you out of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, there's an old saying, open mouth, insert foot. And that occurs because we got this wild thing that's running the show. And, and, and when the tongue is running the show, you can rest assured that the tongue will get you into things that you wish you had never gotten into. The tongue will get you into things that your whole family can't help you get out of. Why? Because it's a wild thing. And anything that runs wild you don't have no idea what it's going to do. So James says that here we are as believers, but yet and still we have to deal with this wild thing. James says now, this, this shouldn't be so. He says that uh, the tongue has a problem. He says because this tongue that will bless and praise God is the same tongue that a cuss a brother out. Now, it's interesting how since we are all made in the image and likeness of God, and when we look at each other, we should see the image and likeness of God. And since the tongue will bless God, Yet and still, when it sees, we see the image of God, the tongue will cuss the image of God out. That, that, that just doesn't, it doesn't make good sense, does it? It just seems like, uh, since we say we know God, since we say we've been accepted into the family of God, that when we see other family members, that we would treat them like loving family members and not cuss them out, but then we should have something of praise and edification to say to them instead of trying to run them down. But it's because of this wild thing that we act this way. James says that uh, this tone, he says it's just a little thing. It's not anything big. It's just a little thing. But he says we can't get control over the little thing. 
Isn't it strange how we can get some control over some big things in our lives, but a little thing like the tongue we can't control? Seems like we should be able to get control of something real small. But James says it's uncontrollable. It is like a wildfire running wild. He says that this tongue is like a, 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 a little spark. You know that you can take a little spark and a little spark can start a big blazing fire. And from that, it can burn out of control and just burn up a whole lot of things. Well, that's the same way it is with our tongue. The tongue can say one little thing about somebody. And the next thing you know, you got a whole big fire burning. And the fire that's burning had no business starting to begin with. Because what was said was not helpful. And when we need to learn how to speak the truth in love. Yeah. See, if we learn how to speak the truth in love, that's what the Bible says, that we as believers, we are to speak the truth in love. Amen. So if there's no love in it, why are we speaking it? Amen. Amen. Why? The only thing I can see is that it must be the love for the wild thing. Yeah, yeah. Because, you see, that's what they said in the song. They said, wild thing, you make my heart sing. And it must be the singing that the wild thing causes in our heart that allows us to say things that we shouldn't say. Because uh, there's that part of us that is within us. You know, as long as we're in these flesh houses, these tabernacles, Paul said that there's a war going on on the inside. And he said, what I would do right, evil is always present. And sometimes that evil that's present is that wild thing. Yeah, yeah, that, that we can't get under control. So therefore, it, it, it runs. And sometimes, uh, if you're not careful, your tongue will run so far ahead of you that you can't catch up with it. Saying some of the things that you say that get out there and then others hear it and just because you said it, they think it's got to be true. Because others have confidence in you, and they figure if you said it, it must be true. So therefore, we have to be careful about what we say, because if we're not careful, we will find ourselves crucifying and killing somebody else's character. Okay. I, actually, we don't kill their character. What we would do is we'll kill their reputation. Yeah, yeah, see, the reason why I say that because uh, reputation is what people give you. Character is who you really are. And what people say about you doesn't change who you are. Because I know I've had some folks uh, say some things about me. Uh, I know this had not happened to y'all. But I've had some folks say some things about me uh, that wasn't true. But uh, I discovered that one thing about a lie is that you don't have to try to chase down a lie. If, if you leave a lie alone, it'll die out and kill off itself. But you see, when you try to chase it down, you give fire and energy to it. You put more kindling on the fire. And the fire starts to burn bright. But when you don't let a lie bother you because you know it's not true, you'll discover it will eventually die out on its own. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But the tongue, that wild thing, will certainly start lies. So it is something that James says uh, that we have no control over. But you know, 
Search this tomb. Search this wild thing. It is untamable. It is always changeable. And since no man can tame it, I'm glad that there is hope and there is help for this wild thing. You see, this what no man can tame, I discovered that the God man can tame. Yeah, yeah, see, see that, that there's a lot that we can't do. That there's a lot that we can't control. There's a lot that we can't tame and that which we can't change. But I discovered that when you turn it over to the God man, who is Jesus Christ, Jesus can and he will change it. Yeah, yeah, see, I, I, I discovered that uh, Jesus can tame the untamable. Yeah, yeah. What we can't tame is it, it, no problem for Jesus. If we learn how to turn it over to him. And then that which is always changeable, I've discovered that Jesus can cause that which has been changeable to become unchangeable. Why? Because he's unchangeable. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I've learned how to take that which I can take, my wild thing. I've learned to turn it over to the God man. You see, uh, uh, and I shared this with St. John before, uh, when I was growing up, when I was a child, if I would stump my toe, I'd say ouch. But, but then, as I grew up, uh, was growing up, I, I noticed that I discovered that there was a wild thing in me. And uh, and that wild thing in me, uh, when I stuck my toe, when I got to be a teenager, uh, it didn't say out no more. Yeah, yeah, the wild thing showed up. And the wild thing spoke up. And what the wild thing said surely was not out. Oh uh, no, but, but the wild thing says some things that I shouldn't have been saying. See, 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 the wild thing had some corrupt communication proceeding out of my mouth. But then as I continued to grow, I, I turned this wild thing over to the God man. And now, when I stump my toe, uh, 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 the God man has tamed the wild thing. And now, I can say ouch when I stump my toe. You see, you have to turn it over to the God man. And when you turn it over to the God man, he will tame that which is untamable by man. You see, we have our limitation, but Jesus has no limitation. My Bible tells me that he went to a hill called Calvary, and he hung, bled, and died on an old rugged cross. Tell me he hung down from the sixth to the ninth hour. He said, Father, it is finished. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. Said he gave up the ghost and he died on Calvary's cross. Took him down off of that cross. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. He stayed there all night Friday. He stayed there all day Saturday. He stayed there all night Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, right early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. And because he has all power in heaven and earth in his hands, he has power to tame an untamable tongue. He has power to tame a wild thing. Take a wild thing 
Turn it into a tame thing. They can always change a thing. Turn it into an unchangeable thing. I'm glad I placed myself in the hands of the man, the God man, who still the water, the man who got up from the grave, all power and ever earth in his hands. And not only does he have power to change my wild thing, he has power to change your wild thing. Whatever your wild thing is, put it in the master's hand. He will change your wild thing. He will tame your wild thing. He will turn your wild thing into something that you can handle because you turn it over to the man, the man from Galilee who walked the dusty streets of Jerusalem. That man, turn it over to the man who came down through 42 generations, landed in a town called Bethlehem, was born in a manger, who was wrapped in swaddling clothes, who grew up and at the age of 12, and be found in the temple with the doctors and the lawyers, answering their questions. At the age of 30, he was baptized of John in the Jordan. And after that, the Spirit drove him out into the wilderness, where he was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. Came back out of the wilderness with power in his hands. And because he has the power that we need, all we have to do is place ourselves in his hands. He will change our wild things. If you turn it over to the master, he's the master of the seas. And whatever the rough seas are in your life, he is the master of those seas. And he can and he will speak peace, be still, to your troubled seas. And you can sail smoothly on over to the other side. When you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. He is the wild thing tamer. Amen. So just turn it over to the Lord. We'd like to extend the invitation to discipleship. This is your opportunity if you don't know Jesus Christ in the part of your sins. This is your opportunity to come as a candidate for baptism to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Secondly, you might know Jesus Christ, but you don't have a church home. We invite you to receive St. John Missionary Baptist Church as your church home. You can come by letter, and certainly if you choose not to receive St. John Missionary Baptist Church as your church home, we will refer you to any other Baptist church in the city. Thirdly, you may be here, you've been a member of St. John, been gone for a period of time without a just cause, and so we invite you to come, restore your fellowship, Restore your relationship, restore your discipleship, and restore your membership with the St. John Missionary Baptist Church. If you fall into any one of those categories, we invite you to come. This is your opportunity. Here's that one today. Here's that one. Here's that one. Only trust them. Only trust them. Only trust them. Just now. Here's that one. Here's that one. Here's that one. God bless you. You may be seated. Just now. Amen. Amen. We certainly hope and pray that God has said something to you in the message that will be a blessing to you. Amen. Travel his journey from earth to glory. Amen. Amen. Certainly, uh, again, we are grateful to God for your presence on this morning. And we certainly thank you for your prayers on this morning. Amen. Certainly, we want to remember Sister Tasha uh, Young in prayer. Uh, certainly, we ask that you would hold her up in prayer as she goes through. Uh, and her family goes through this time of bereavement. Amen. Certainly, um, 
But Rima is no stranger to many of our doors. One thing about life, the, the, the longer, discover the longer you live, the more times bereavement will knock on your door. Amen. Certainly, uh, when opportunities uh, like this occur, when these situations come, we need to pray for one another for strength. Because it certainly takes strength to go through these times, even though we know that God never makes a mistake. Uh, but uh, it is also difficult for us sometimes to deal with God's choices that he makes. Um, you know, because if it was up to us, we would just hold on to loved ones forever. Amen. 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 No, 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 no matter what they're going through, we want to hold on to them and we want to keep them. God, God has a way of knowing that uh, when he placed each of us here, that each of us come here with an expiration date stamped on our lives. Amen. Amen. And when, when that date arrives, there's, there's no postponing. You know, it's not like a hairdresser's appointment where you can reschedule. Not like a, a doctor's appointment where you can call and counsel and Say, well, I'll schedule it for another time. When, when God sets this date and this appointment, uh, you must answer. Amen. You Amen. must answer. And, and that's why it is imperative uh, that we all make sure we get ready Amen. for that appointment when it comes. And the way we get ready for that appointment is by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. And then when that time comes, we... We don't have to worry, we don't have to fear, uh, because we know where we are going, and we know how we are going, because Jesus said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. So we serve the admonish one and all to, to, to make your reservation. Uh, while you can, while the blood is yet running warm in your body. Because once the blood is no longer running warm in your body, you no longer have breath in your body, too late to make reservations then. Uh, the, the, your flight has already been booked for another location and another destination. Amen. Uh, does nothing else to claim our attention. Uh, let us prepare to be dismissed. Amen. Let the church say 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 amen. God has spoken. God has spoken. So let the church, so let the church say, amen. say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church say amen. Eternal God and loving Father, we thank you, Lord, for the honor and the privilege to come into your house together in your name to worship you. We thank you for the presence and power of your Holy Spirit and how he has manifested himself in this place this day. Father, we came to worship. Now we leave to serve. Help us, O oh Lord, to be better servants for you going out than we were when we came in. Now, Father, we ask a special blessing upon Sister Tasha and her family as they are experiencing the transitioning of a loved one. And we know, God, that this didn't catch you by surprise. And so we pray and ask, O oh God, that you would undergird, strengthen, comfort, and keep this family as they go through this time of sorrow, as only you can do. Help them to understand and remind them that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And one of these days, there will be a great getting up morning when all the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who live and yet remain shall be caught up to meet the Master in the air. Help us to ever look forward to that day of that great reunion of the saints. 
Now, Father, we ask you to dismiss us now from this place, but never from your presence. Now, may the grace of God, sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, go with us now from this day, from henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say together, Thank <laughs> you.